Now let's create some simple materials for our models to better replicate different kinds of surfaces. Now materials and textures are an important part of making your models come to life because by default everything looks the same. So even though we've created these models, the surfaces all look the same on what looks to be probably like a terrain, maybe rocks, maybe. Uh, here's a kind of metal structure or it could be plastic. It's hard to tell because all the surfaces have the same quality, this flat gray look. And so what we want to do is kind of better distinguish our different pieces of geometry as different real world objects. So we want a shader that makes it look like this is rock or uh, that makes this look like it's metal or this looks like it's rubber. And so we can do that by using materials and we'll use materials in the hypershade. Let's go to windows, rendering editors in hypershade or you can click on this icon right up here. So let's activate the hypershade. Now it's a floating window, but I'm going to go ahead and maximize it in our view so that we can take advantage of all the cool stuff that we can do here in the hypershade. Now we do want to be able to see our geometry. So what we can do is add our viewport to this interface. Before we do that though, let's take a quick look at the existing interface. So this is an area where we can see the different materials that we're going to be adding to our scene as these little swatches. You can see over here, this is a preview in our material viewer of the selected material on a shader ball, this piece of geometry. Under that are, are the properties of the material that we can modify. I can change the color, transparency, and so forth. To the left is a, is a workspace where we can work with our materials as nodes, which we'll look at in a second. And then to the left of that, we have the, the bins uh, and the creation area where we can actually create new materials that'll show up up here. Now we already have one material loaded into the scene and that was that basic gray material that we saw earlier. Let's see what that looks like on in our uh, in our scene here in the hypershade. So let's go to window and let's add a viewport. And I'm just going to click and drag this up right next to the material viewer and under shading turn on smooth shade all. That'll let us see this material applied to our geometry. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the grid as well. So under show grid. Okay, so one more thing that I want to do is make the material swatches a little bit bigger for now. So this Lambert material is one of the three types of materials we're going to talk about. And you can see that just looking at it here and looking at it on the shader ball, it's just a very matte finish, not very shiny at all, very plain. But I think it would work, this type of material would work for the ground because it's rock and dirt. So let's leave the Lambert 1 applied here. Now normally you would, you would create a new Lambert and assign it, but just for speed we're going to leave this uh, assigned to the ground. And so you can see that here that it's shown on the shader ball, but if you don't want to look at it on this particular piece of geometry, you can go in and change this to maybe cloth or a teapot. So it depends on what it is you're creating. If you're making something that's kind of fluid, you can use one of these to look at this. But these are kind of really cool ways of previewing your materials. Or if you just want a sphere, there you go. So with that selected, we'll go ahead and we can change the properties of the Lambert. So we can maybe make this like a red color. And you can see it's actually being applied to everything because right now everything is assigned. That material is assigned to everything. So we can change the color. We could change the transparency. Change the ambient color to make it a little bit brighter or even give it kind of a glow if we wanted to. And then you could also rename your file here. Now because this is our starting material, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. So let's say that we want to now assign something to this these metallic pieces that is a little bit shinier. So let's go ahead and create a new material. We can do that by going to create in the menu or come down to Maya surface and let's just create a blend. I'm going to click on blend and you can see something appear down here as well as up here in the upper left. So what's happening down here, I'm just using the alt button here. Um, this is our work area and this, these materials are represented as nodes. Now we're gonna, not going to go into working with these nodes, but just be aware that we can come in here and start connecting different things together to create some really interesting effects. So we've got our blend selected up here. Let's go ahead and name this metal blend and let's assign it to our tank. Now we can click on the tank, right click on the material and say assign material to selection or we can middle mouse drag that material over onto the object. Now make sure we select the metal blend 
we can change the color. Let's give it kind of a blue tint. And you can see here that this material has a little bit more of like a specular highlight here. It's the shininess. Now, specular highlight is kind of a faked reflection. And so we can change the highlight to make this surface look like maybe a little bit more like metal. So one of the things we can do to make it look more like metal is to change the specular color. And let's give it either more of a blue or maybe, can maybe add another color in. But I'll add a little bit of color to the specular color. Now in this blend, we also have this eccentricity and the specular roll off that we can change. You can see I can broaden out the spec or I can make it very tight and shiny. So this would be more for something that's very glossy versus something that has a little bit more roughness in the surface. And then we can take sort of the intensity of that down as well. So we can make that look a little bit more metallic in contrast to the very flat looking rock and you can see that a little bit better as we rotate around now if we want this hose to be more like a rubber hose we could add maybe a fong and i'll just clear the workspace and add that fong back in so you can see the node here we'll make sure that we have our fong selected let's just call this rubber fong and we'll assign that to the tube and then for that fong, we want to make sure to select the fong and go to color. Let's make it pretty dark. And then we have some options that are a little bit different, but they allow us to do pretty much the same thing. So get our specular either tighter or wider. We want to make it a little bit tighter and take the intensity down a little bit so it looks a little bit more like rubber. Now getting the material and surface properties correct can only really go so far. You also probably want to have textures on some of these items. So for instance on this ground, even though I've got the surface quality, you don't really get any of the color detail that you would have on the ground. So to do that we can pipe in a, a texture map. So a texture map can be uh, something that you've painted, it can be a procedural map. We're going to use a, an image that we've used, uh, that we've created. So we will actually not select the geometry, but I'm going to select the Lambert here and let's go into the color and we're going to pipe our texture into the color so all these little check boxes off to the right hand side that's where we can pipe in our nodes so I'll click on this and that's going to bring up a create render node and I want to create a file node that will allow us to bring in a texture map so we'll click on file and then this will allow us to to bring in an image so we'll click on the little folder We'll navigate to our project files and we want to choose ground color and you can see this is the image that we're looking for. Let's hit open and so now this ground color is going to be used instead of this color swatch to drive the color. Now we don't see any difference right here yet so all we have to do is go into shading hardware texturing to see that. Now it's a little bit hard to see right now so let me minimize the hyper shade and we'll look at it in the viewport. So now we not only have the surface quality, like the shininess of the surface driven by the material, but we also have the color being driven by a texture map. So that gives us a much better looking asset, something that actually looks more like rock than the plain gray geometry that we had before. So I'd encourage you to go in, experiment a little bit with those materials, bring in some texture maps and see what you can do with the Hypershade in Maya. Well, now that we've taken a look at materials, in the next lesson, we'll learn to add lights to our scene and manipulate those lights to get the look that we want.